we're going to talk about something fascinating, something that touches the core of who we are. The idea that you might be a chosen one. Now, this concept of being chosen isn't just reserved for mythical tales or ancient scriptures. It's a very real phenomenon, something that each of us can tap into. So let's explore the five unique signs that you are a chosen one through the lens of the teachings that have guided so many on their path to personal transformation. The first sign that you are a chosen one is an innate sense of purpose. From a young age, you might have felt that you're here for a reason, something bigger than the mundane routines of daily life. This feeling isn't just a vague notion, it's a deep, compelling force that drives you to seek out what truly makes your heart sing. You see, our brains are wired to find meaning and purpose. It's a natural part of being human. When we align with that inner calling, we activate a higher level of consciousness. This means that when you follow your sense of purpose, you are tuning into a more profound state of awareness. This is not just a psychological concept, but a measurable state. Studies show that individuals who have a clear sense of purpose have more coherent brainwave patterns. This coherence means their brain is functioning at a more optimal level, allowing them to think more clearly and make better decisions. When your brain waves are coherent, it creates a sense of harmony within you. This harmony helps you stay focused on your goals and remain calm even in challenging situations. This coherence between your heart and mind creates a powerful energy field around you. This energy field is like a magnet that attracts opportunities and resources to help you fulfill your mission. When you are aligned with your purpose, you may notice that things seem to fall into place more easily. People who share your vision come into your life and doors that were once closed begin to open. For example, if your purpose is to help others, you might find that you are naturally drawn to professions or activities that allow you to make a difference. You may meet mentors who guide you on your path, or you might stumble upon books and resources that provide the knowledge you need. This is not a coincidence. It is the universe responding to your inner alignment. The second sign is resilience. This means you have the ability to face challenges and hardships that would break most people, but you always find a way to rise above them. Resilience is not just about enduring pain or overcoming obstacles. It's about transforming those experiences into wisdom and strength. When we face adversity, our brains and bodies respond by releasing stress hormones. These hormones help us survive in the short term by making us more alert and ready to act. However, when we learn to shift our perception of these challenges, we can transform stress into growth. This is the essence of resilience. By changing the way we think and feel about our experiences, we alter our biochemistry. When we face tough situations, our body usually reacts with stress, seeing the situation as a threat. But if we learn to view challenges differently, our body can start to see stress as a positive thing. Instead of feeling overwhelmed, we can see challenges as opportunities to learn and grow. This change in perspective helps us become stronger and wiser. For example, imagine you're going through a difficult time at work or school. Instead of seeing it as an unbearable burden, you can choose to see it as a chance to develop new skills or prove your resilience. This mindset shift not only makes the experience more bearable, but also helps you grow from it. Over time, these positive experiences build up and reinforce your resilience. This means that every time you bounce back from a setback, you are reinforcing your identity as a resilient person. You are proving to yourself and others that you have the strength and determination to overcome any obstacle. This makes you feel more confident and capable, which in turn makes it easier to face future challenges. Resilience is a key trait of those who achieve great things in life. It allows you to keep moving forward, even when things get tough. It helps you to see setbacks not as failures, but as opportunities to learn and grow. This positive outlook can make a huge difference in your life, helping you to achieve your goals and fulfill your potential. The third sign is intuition. 
This means you have an uncanny ability to sense things before they happen or to understand situations and people on a deeper level. You might get a feeling that something good or bad is about to occur, or you might have insights about people that others don't see. This sense is often called a gut feeling. Many people think intuition is a mystical or magical ability. However, it's actually a natural function of the brain. Our subconscious mind is always working, even when we don't realize it. It constantly processes information from our environment much faster than our conscious mind can. This means your brain is picking up on subtle cues and patterns that your conscious mind might miss. For example, you might notice a small change in someone's tone of voice or body language without realizing it. Your subconscious mind notices these things and gives you a feeling or hunch. When you learn to trust your intuition, you are tapping into this vast reservoir of knowledge. It's like having a secret tool that helps you navigate through life. You might feel a strong urge to take a particular action or to avoid a certain situation. By listening to these feelings, you can make better decisions. This is why many successful people attribute their achievements to following their gut feelings. They understand that their intuition is a valuable guide. Intuition is your inner compass, guiding you towards your destiny. Just like a compass shows you the right direction, your intuition helps you find the right path in life. It can lead you to opportunities that you might have otherwise missed or help you avoid potential problems. For example, you might feel a strong attraction to a particular job or place and later find out it was the perfect fit for you. Or you might feel uneasy about a decision and later discover it would have been a mistake. The fourth sign is a profound sense of empathy. This means you feel deeply connected to other people and often find yourself experiencing their emotions as if they were your own. Imagine feeling someone else's joy, sadness, or pain just as strongly as you feel your own emotions. This level of empathy can be both a blessing and a challenge. On one hand, empathy allows you to connect with people on a deeper level. When you truly understand what someone else is feeling, it creates a strong bond between you. This can lead to relationships that are rich, meaningful, and filled with love and understanding. People are drawn to you because they feel seen and heard. Your ability to empathize makes you a comforting presence in their lives. On the other hand, constantly feeling the emotions of others can be overwhelming. It can be exhausting to carry not only your own emotions but also the emotions of those around you. Sometimes, you might feel drained or even sad without knowing why, simply because you are picking up on the feelings of others. It's important to learn how to manage this sensitivity so it doesn't take a toll on your well-being. Despite these challenges, empathy is a powerful tool for personal growth and transformation. When we open our hearts and truly connect with others, we activate the brain's mirror neurons. These neurons are responsible for empathy and compassion. Mirror neurons allow us to understand and mimic the emotions and actions of others. When you see someone smile, your mirror neurons help you understand their happiness and might even make you smile too. By practicing empathy, we strengthen these neural pathways, making us more compassionate and understanding. The more we use these neurons, the stronger they become, much like muscles that get stronger with exercise. This means that with time and practice, you can become even more empathetic and compassionate. Empathy is a hallmark of the chosen ones. It connects us to the collective consciousness, the shared pool of thoughts, emotions, and experiences of all humanity. When you feel empathy, you tap into this collective consciousness. You become aware that we are all connected and that our actions affect each other. This deep connection allows you to be a force for positive change in the world. Empathy drives you to help others, to be kind, and to work towards making the world a better place. You might find yourself drawn to careers or activities where you can support and uplift others, such as counseling, teaching, or volunteering. 
the fifth and final sign that you are a chosen one is having a heightened state of awareness. This means you see the world differently, noticing things that others might miss. It's like having a special lens that helps you tune into the subtle energies and synchronicities around you. Many people describe this heightened awareness as a spiritual awakening, but it's also backed by science. When we elevate our consciousness, we are essentially tuning into a higher frequency. Imagine a radio dial. As you turn it, you can find different stations. Elevating your consciousness is like tuning into a station that has clearer, more meaningful broadcasts. This higher frequency allows us to see and experience the world in a more expansive way. Everything becomes more vibrant, more connected. Our brains play a crucial role in this process. When we are in a state of heightened awareness, our brains produce different patterns of brain waves. These brainwave patterns are linked to creativity, intuition, and higher states of consciousness. For example, when we meditate or engage in deep reflective thinking, our brain produces theta waves. These waves are associated with relaxation, creativity, and insight. By cultivating this heightened awareness, we can tap into the quantum field, which is the realm of infinite possibilities. The quantum field is a term used in science to describe a space where all potential outcomes exist. It's like a vast ocean of possibilities, waiting for us to dip in and choose what we want to experience. This is where the magic happens. When we access the quantum field with our heightened awareness, we can manifest our deepest desires. Manifestation is the process of bringing something from the realm of possibility into our physical reality. It starts with a clear intention, a thought or vision of what we want. By focusing on this intention and combining it with elevated emotions like joy, gratitude, and love, we can attract our desires into our lives. Imagine you have a dream of living in a beautiful home surrounded by nature. With heightened awareness, you can visualize this dream in great detail. You see the house, the garden, the trees, and feel the joy of living there. This clear intention, combined with the elevated emotions you feel, sends a powerful signal to the quantum field. The field responds by aligning circumstances, opportunities, and people to help make your dream a reality. Heightened awareness also makes us more intuitive. Intuition is that inner knowing, the gut feeling that guides us. When we are in tune with our higher consciousness, our intuition becomes stronger. We start to trust our inner guidance more, making decisions that align with our true selves. This leads to a more fulfilling and purposeful life. Another aspect of heightened awareness is being present in the moment. Many of us spend a lot of time thinking about the past or worrying about the future. But when we are fully present, we can appreciate the beauty of life as it unfolds. We notice the small miracles, the synchronicities, and the interconnectedness of everything. Living in the present moment also reduces stress and anxiety. When we are aware of our thoughts and emotions, we can choose how to respond to situations rather than reacting automatically. This mindfulness helps us stay calm and centered even in challenging times. Now let's dive deeper into how these signs manifest in your life and how you can harness them to fulfill your highest potential. When you have a strong sense of purpose, you are like a magnet, attracting all the resources, people, and opportunities that align with your mission. This is because your energy is coherent and coherence creates a powerful magnetic field around you. This field is what draws everything you need into your life. So if you haven't yet discovered your purpose, take some time to reflect on what truly makes you happy and fulfilled. What are the activities or causes that ignite a fire within you? Follow that passion and you will naturally align with your purpose. Resilience is about more than just bouncing back. It's about transforming adversity into growth. When faced with challenges, instead of seeing them as obstacles, view them as opportunities for personal development. This shift in perspective can have a profound impact on your biochemistry. 
Studies have shown that people who adopt a growth mindset, the belief that they can grow and improve through effort and learning, have lower levels of stress and higher levels of well-being. So the next time you face a setback, remember that it's an opportunity to grow and evolve. Intuition is your inner guide, helping you navigate through life with ease and grace. To strengthen your intuition, practice mindfulness and meditation. These practices quiet the mind and allow you to tune into the subtle signals from your subconscious. Trusting your intuition can lead to better decision-making and a more fulfilling life. So pay attention to those gut feelings and inner nudges. They are your inner compass, guiding you towards your true path. Empathy connects you to others in a deep and meaningful way. By practicing empathy, you not only enhance your relationships, but also activate the brain's mirror neurons, which are responsible for empathy and compassion. This creates a positive feedback loop, where the more you practice empathy, the more compassionate you become. So make an effort to truly connect with others, listen to their stories, and understand their perspectives. This will not only enrich your life, but also make you a force for positive change in the world. So being a chosen one is not about being special or different. It's about recognizing and harnessing the unique gifts and abilities that we all possess. The moment you remember your problems, a memory is a record of the past. You're thinking in the past. Every one of those problems has an emotion associated with them. So all of a sudden you start feeling unhappy, you start feeling bitter, you start feeling frustrated. So now your body's in the past. So then most people then create a state of being that's connected to their past. The same behaviors create the same experiences and the same experiences produce the same emotions. And those very same emotions drive the very same thoughts. And your biology, your neurocircuitry, your neurochemistry, your neurohormones, and even your genetic expression is equal to how you think, how you act, and how you feel. And how you think, how you act, and how you feel is called your personality. And your personality creates your personal reality. That's it. So then, if you wanted to create a new personal reality, a new life, then you would have to start thinking about what you've been thinking about and change it. You would have to become aware of your unconscious thoughts and observe them. You would have to pay attention to your automatic habits and behaviors and modify them. And you would have to look at the emotions you live by every single day that are connected to your past and decide if those emotions belong in your future. You see, most people try to create a new personal reality as the same personality, and it doesn't work. You literally have to become someone else. And you are here this week to learn vital information about creating a future and be defined by a vision of the future instead of the memories of the past. Because if you are not defined by some vision that is bigger than you and you are not passionate about that vision, then you are left with the old hardware of the past in your brain and you will be predictable in your life. So would you agree then? New thoughts, new information should lead to new choices. New choices should lead to new behaviors. And new behaviors should create new experiences. And new experiences should produce new emotions. And those new emotions should drive new thoughts. And that's called evolution. So if your brain is a record of the past and you don't have a vision of the future, then you are living in the past and you will never arrive at that new future. Now there's another potential for you to exist free from the chains of the old self. That potential exists right now. Now where you place your attention is where you place your energy. So you want that energy to move right to the top of your head. So then as you inhale, you bring that energy all the way up to the top you keep following your breath, you lock all the way to the top. When you get to the top, now you hold your breath. And when you hold your breath, you contract those intrinsic muscles and you begin to lift those muscles up and you begin to compress those muscles and you begin to push that cerebral spinal fluid up into your brain. So then why do I ask you to inhale and hold your breath? Now this isn't inhaling and turning purple and pushing. If you're doing that, you're doing it wrong. It's a slow, steady breath and you follow that breath 
all the way to the top, either to the top of your head or you put your awareness on where that pineal gland is between the back of your throat and the back of your head. Now when you inhale, that inhalation is very slow and very steady. It's not a big inhalation and pushing. It's a slow, steady breath, and you're contracting these muscles and coordinating it, and you're following your breath all the way to the top of your head. And when you get to the top of your head, I'm gonna ask you to inhale a little bit more, and as you pull up, you're gonna lock these muscles down even further, and you're lifting them up. Once you lift them up and you have your attention either on the top of your head or the space that your pineal gland occupies in space, I'm going to ask you to lock those muscles down and pump, squeeze, or push. And I want you to push that fluid up into your brain by squeezing the muscles. Not by holding your breath harder, but by squeezing those muscles. I want you to begin to pump that fluid and begin to compress up against your pineal gland. When you do this breath, you have to demonstrate a will that's greater than any program. You have to find a level of intensity or a level of passion that's greater than the body as the mind or any addiction to any emotion. You have to be inspire, inspiration, the movement of energy. Don't be afraid of it. Just surrender into it. For some people, their body will do unusual things. That's information trying to be integrated into it. Don't be afraid of it. Just surrender into it. If your body does weird things, more than likely that's energy moving to your brain. If you have a lapse of consciousness or you all of a sudden find yourself on the ground, that's energy moving into your brain. It's happened to me numerous times. It's a sign that you're getting close or at least doing it correctly. Now where you place your attention is where you place your energy. So you want that energy to move right to the top of your head inspiration, the movement of energy. You have to find a level of intensity or a level of passion that's greater than the body as the mind or any addiction to any emotion. Don't be afraid of it, just surrender into it. On a Sunday morning while she was in the shower, her husband said goodbye to his two children, yelled something to her while she was in the shower, and then went to the tallest building in Amsterdam and jumped off the building and committed suicide. Now that is a stressful event, and when she got the news, she experienced all the emotions that people experience from something that's shocking and traumatic like that. She was suffering, she was in pain, she was resentful, she was guilty, she was confused, she was angry. She went through the whole gamut of emotions, and all of those emotions, by the way, are derived from the hormones of stress. So she has an event in her life. It changes her biologically. She doesn't know how to control her emotional reaction. It turns into a mood, one long emotional reaction. If you keep reviewing that event in your mind, you begin to produce the same chemistry in your brain and body as if the event was occurring. So her body is being conditioned to the past because she's reliving the experience 50 to 100 times in a day, and her body is beginning to believe it's in the same past experience over and over again. It ultimately goes from a mood to a temperament, and now people are asking her in her life, why are you so upset? She tells the story and she's basically saying, I am this way because of this event that happened to me four months ago. So then if we keep that going for extended periods of time and those emotions are driving our thoughts and we can't think greater than how we feel, our feelings have become the means of thinking. We're thinking in the past and now we're stuck in our biology. So one day she wakes up and she's completely paralyzed from her waist down and she can't get out of bed, so they rush her to the hospital. They do MRIs, they do all the tests. They can't find anything significant with her, so they just diagnose her with neuritis. And so now she's bedridden, and she cannot literally get out of bed. So now she can't work, she can't take care of her children. Her mother has to move in with her, and she doesn't have any money because she's not working, and her stress levels go up. So now the condition gets worse. As her stress levels go up, it's the same chemicals of stress that are knocking the brain and body out of balance, signaling the wrong genes in the wrong way. And another few months later, she develops these huge ulcerations in all the mucous membranes of her body, in her mouth, her throat, her upper stomach, her bladder, her vagina, her anus. 
She's got these huge ulcers. Now she can't eat, and if she can't eat, she's knocking her body now out of chemical balance even more, and it hurts. So now she's spiraling downward, and then she finally starts noticing her symptoms getting worse, and she goes to the doctor, and they diagnose her with esophageal cancer. Now the moment she gets the diagnosis of esophageal cancer, now she gets even more stressed, and she's in fear now, and she realizes that her children may not have a mom. And so she came to one of our workshops, and I remember specifically because she came in with crutches and a wheelchair and a walker, and she sat on the left side of the room, and it was an introductory level course, and she understood that she could change it intellectually, but she had a very big challenge ahead of her, and she realized how much she was in her past. She had a vision of her future, like she wasn't visualizing anything, she just got a very clear vision and she was so excited that she went home and she did her meditation every single day. Now she understood that she had to upregulate new genes and downregulate genes that had to do with her disease and that every day she had to knock on the genetic door. Now the first thing I wanna say is that I'm certain that there were days that she didn't feel like doing her meditation and she did that anyway. She did it anyway. There were days where she had a tremendous amount of doubt and she didn't think it was possible, but she did her meditations every single day. The universe only gives us what we think we're worthy of receiving, so we gotta come initiated into this and understand it. If you wanna create a new life, a new personal reality, you gotta change your personality, which means you better start thinking about what you've been thinking about and changing it. You begin to become conscious of your unconscious actions or habits or behaviors and modify them. And then we have to begin to look at the emotions that we live by every single day that keep us connected to the past and decide, do these emotions belong in our future? So most people are trying to create a new personal reality as the same personality, and it doesn't work. You literally have to become someone else. And can you select a new possibility in the quantum field? and begin to emotionally embrace that future every single day to such a degree that your body, as the unconscious mind, the objective mind, does not know the difference between the experience in your life that's creating the emotion and the emotion that you're fabricating by thought alone to the degree that you begin to signal new genes and new ways to change your body to look like the experience has already happened. Now, the latest research in epigenetics says it's absolutely possible. This every day, installing the circuitry every day, conditioning the body into the emotion of the future, that your body begins to change to look like it's already happened. Now, this is where it gets fun because now you no longer have to go anywhere to get it. If you think that your thoughts have something to do with your future, just from a theoretical standpoint, that your thoughts create your destiny, and you think 60 to 70,000 thoughts in one day, and 90% of those thoughts are the same thoughts as the day before, well then your life isn't going to change very much as long as you're thinking the same way. If you're not being defined by a vision of the future, then you're left with the memories of the past. Is it possible then that the way you think and the way you feel can begin to produce effects in your outer world? Now that isn't something that you swallow in one bite. It's a process of gaining knowledge. It's a process of practice. It's a process of experience. But once you start seeing those synchronicities, those coincidences, those opportunities that start to fall into place because you're experiencing change in your outer world, if you're doing the work, you're gonna start paying attention to what you're doing inside of you that's producing the effect outside of you. And once you correlate the changes of what you're doing inside of you with the effect you produce outside of you, you're going to pay attention to what you did and you're going to do it again. And all of a sudden, you're going to start believing more that you're the creator of your life and less of the victim of your life. And those same thoughts lead to the same choices. The same choices lead to the same behaviors. The same behaviors create the exact same experiences and we anticipate the same feelings or emotions from those experiences and those emotions are the payoff that drive our very same thoughts. Well, our biology, our neurocircuitry, our neurochemistry, our hormones and even our gene expression will be equal to how we think, 
how we act and how we feel. And how we think, how we act, and how we feel is called our personality. And our personality creates our personal reality. That's it. I want people to begin to understand that thoughts are very powerful, feelings drive our thoughts, and that they can begin to create a better life for themselves once they understand some of these principles. We live in a world where often when people think about visioning the future, they vision stuff. So you have a vision of the car you want, or you have a vision of an amount of money you want, or you have a vision of a home you want, and you see this with people with their vision boards. What's your take on that? And is that the right type of visioning? And what is the right type of visioning? Well, we do so many different variations because I think people integrate information differently. And all of those cars and homes and whatever that is, they are symbols of what it looks like when a person actually arrives at this concept called abundance, right? So if those things help them to associate with something that creates a feeling of abundance, and they're building their vision board to help them to get clear on their intent, then that's fine. Because they're associating objects or things or material things that they'll say, that's when I know that I'm abundant. That's fine. Other people will say, look, abundance just means that I have more than I need and I'm happy with that. 